thank everybody for coming out and supporting Brookview and our courageous moms and children. Today is a special day for all of us here because it's the beginning of a new life for the moms and children who live here at Brookview 3. The theme for this month's Women's History Month was Nevertheless, She Persisted. And that is so apropos to this project. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> It has taken us about, this is like year seven, and we got another year to build a project. But we're happy as we're in the ground. And I want to say a special thank you to folks who have been there since day one. And the first person I want to thank is Chris Frobe from Nixon Peabody and his team, which includes Christina Ricotta, and they did work with us since day one, going through everything with us, totally pro bono. We could never afford what they've done for us, never. And we thank them immensely hanging in there. The next folks I want to do a special shout out, and they're not here today, but they're very special people. It's Christine and Kelly from D&D. &D. And, and, and Sheila, I want you to know, they're special to us. Because they didn't tell us when we came down, you must be out of your mind. <laughs> they supported us from day one and said, we're going to walk you through this whole process no matter how long it takes. And I want to thank Ryan for still being here with us and supporting us. Ryan from D&D. And Bronya, she's a ribbon cutting person from, she's from CDAC. She says, I'll be at the ribbon cutting. <laughs> and Bronya is also someone that we really respect and support because she helped us get all the initial feasibility money so that we can even figure out if this is possible. And that came from CDAC. And she's been there since day one, and she's still here. She still calls me on the phone. <laughs> um, next people are Pat and Pam from Eastern Bank. They've been with us more than seven years. They've been with us for almost 25 years. But they're just babies, just babies. Um, so they've been with us for, forever, always supporting us, always encouraging, encouraging us always giving us new ideas because we believe in the possibilities and they do too so i thank you for, for all your support and you'll hear from them in the in the project while we're speaking i also want to do a special thanks to the board and staff of brookview house and our volunteers and supporters because I've been telling them for seven years, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And at some, po some points they were like, really, Deborah? <laughs> no, it's not. But they hung in there with me because they believe as well. So I want to thank the staff and the board of Brooklyn House. And I also want to thank the other folks from DHCD, the Child Care Trust, because it's the children who are most important to us. Because that's how you really end homelessness, is providing the children at a young age <laughs> with the supports and services that they need. So I want to thank the Child Care Trust for supporting this project as well. So next, um, I just want to introduce the pastor from St. John's Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor Art J. Gordon, who will do the invocation for us. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this new day and this new time. 
For indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made. We thank you for this time in this city and in our history. We thank you, God, for the Brookview House. We thank you for all the work that they have been all, already been able to do. But we ask a special blessing upon them as they move forward to do even greater works. As they continue to strive to help women and children in the fight against homelessness. So God, we ask for abundant blessings upon this house, upon God, how it serves the community. We ask a special prayer for the governor and his leadership of this commonwealth, for the mayor and his leadership of this city, for Deborah Hughes and the leadership of the Brookview House, and that he would transform this city. We know that across this nation, homelessness is a pressing issue. But God, we thank you for places like Brookview House, that have made their foot in the community and seek to transform the lives of many. God, we say thank you. And finally, God, we ask that when the history books are written one day, that somebody will have to write and say that there was a Brookview House that helped women and children, that there was a Brookview House that helped end homelessness in the city of Boston. There was a Brookview House that helped transform the place of where it was. We thank you, God, and ask abundant blessings upon this service, upon this opportunity, God, of this organization to continue to see those who have been rejected, who have been lost, who have been hurt, and who have been turned away. But God, we believe in you, that you are still able, and that you use organizations like Brookview House to help transform the places of where they've been. We thank you, God, and praise you for the work you will do through the Brookview House for now and time to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Gordon. That was powerful. Next, I want to introduce the mayor of the city of Boston, Martin J. Walsh, and I want to commend him for his leadership and for choosing the people at D, the right people to be at DD, like Sheila Dillon and Kelly Shea and others. So I want to thank you, Mayor Walsh. Thank you very much, Deb. And let me just um, thank everyone for coming out today. Um, I want to start with the governor, which I'll, I'm going to introduce the governor in a few minutes. Uh, I want to thank Representative Russell Holmes, uh, who I had the pleasure of serving in the House of Representatives with. And his, his, his passion is making sure that we create opportunities for people in neighborhoods and housing and economic development. And today is, is a great step uh, forward in doing that. I also want to thank City Council Minister Sabi George, who's with us today. Uh, another person who, uh, Anissa, Last year in the budget, uh, one of our top priorities was making sure that uh, homeless families uh, get the respect and, and, the, dis and, 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 and the, the attention that they deserve in our school department. And I want to thank Councilor Asabi George for that. Uh, <laughs> Councilor Gordon, thank you for the prayers uh, for this beautiful day. I uh, appreciate it. Um, Eastern Bank, thank you. Pat and Pam, thank you very much uh, for your great support. and. All, everyone here, Roger Herzog at CDAC, and Sheila Dillon, who was mentioned already, and Michael O'Connor, the contractor, and everybody here today, thank you for, 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 for completing this beautiful, getting this beautiful project moving forward. So I, I truly appreciate it. The community that's here, thank you, the community. Uh, thank you for your involvement, uh, and thank you for, for pushing us to, to make sure we have a better project here as well. So I, I appreciate all of your support. I want to give uh, two shout outs. One is to uh, Captain Hussein is here and our community service officers. Thank you very much for your help. Uh, and they have, uh, they have a, a very special uh, worker with them this year. It's going to work this summer with them. Uh, Jonah Washington, she's a young woman from Tech Boston who's going to be going to West Virginia. She's going to be a mountaineer this year. So I want, from Roxbury, so I want to uh, give, give Jonah a shout out as well for her great work. Um, I, I too want to thank everyone who makes Brookview House, the vibrant, supportive community that it is. I want to thank the staff there. I want to thank the, long, the, the board members there. I want to thank the residents, and I want to thank the president, Deborah Hughes. Uh, last year, Deborah was named the unsung hero for the Massachusetts Commission on the Status of Women. It was a well-deserved honor, somebody who's devoted her entire career to serving people in our community. And I truly want to thank you, Deborah, and congratulate you on that recognition. 
because as the history books go down and we talk about the impact for a few houses had on families, uh, we have to talk about its leaders. So congratulations and thank you. Today we're, cel we're celebrating a milestone in the Brookview community uh, for our efforts to end homelessness in the city of Austin. This new building is going to add 12 units of affordable rental housing, bringing Brookview's total to 54. It's also going to house not just the living space, but classrooms, support centers, and the city of Austin's Tech Goes Home program. Uh, this is the heart and soul of our housing plan, something as we continue to move forward. It's about creating enough housing to grow our population and to be able to allow people that grew up in a neighborhood like this to be able to stay in a neighborhood like this. That's really what our plan is all about. Um, which just as importantly, it's about supportive housing and making sure that families get the unique needs that they have to be living our neighborhood and be supported and feel supported. So it's not just simply about building a house, it's about building a community. And building a community inside a community is even more important, and that's what's happening here today. And that's exactly what Brookview provides. I'm proud that this project received Housing Trust Awards and an IDP award totaling over $1.5 million. It's a great example of how the policies that we've been able to work on, expand, and create in the city of Austin are working, and we're going to continue to do that. It's just not affordable units in building in downtown Boston. It's about helping move us forward in our mission to meet the deepest needs and solve our biggest challenges. So some of those nice buildings that we see with the big tower cranes that are coming out of the grounds, there's a lot of good coming out of those buildings that's come investing back in our communities. And we're going to continue to do that as we move forward here in the city. In order to get where we need to be as a city in Boston, we need to work together. We need to continue to draw on the experiences of the great communities, of the organizers, of the activists, of the, of the nonprofits, of the banks, of the construction companies, of the state, of the federal government. We need to continue to work together in all of this. Deborah and her team have been doing this work for nearly a quarter of a century, and we're certainly proud to work alongside them. Organizations like Brookview have helped us create the model we are using to end homelessness in the city of Boston. Their objective is to provide a safe, supportive environment to help people prepare for what's next. These values have helped us end chronic breakfast homelessness in the city of Boston, and they will continue to guide us in our, in our work to end youth homelessness as well. I want to thank all of you who made this a reality today. I'm proud that we're, all, we're able to work together. Uh, now I have the honor to introduce somebody uh, who has been a great partner in our work on regional issues such as ending homelessness, such as tackling the opioid crisis, such as creating more housing opportunities across the Commonwealth, more economic development opportunities across the Commonwealth. And it is key, in this, in this era of divisiveness in Washington, D.C., as you see, uh, we don't let the divisiveness happen here. We don't let the divisiveness happen here in Massachusetts or, or Boston. Because it's not, it's not about who gets the credit. It's about how do we advance the ball down the field so we can do all the great things we want to do. So it's my honor to introduce our governor, Governor Charlie Baker. Thank you very much, Mayor Walsh and, and Deborah. Congratulations to you and to your team. Um, the mayor did a really good job of, of speaking to all of the folks who are part of this team sport associated with not just this project, but the work that is done by Brookview every single day. So I'm going to, rather than repeat what he already said, uh, what I'm going to do is speak to the, the notion that this whole issue of family homelessness can only be dealt with and addressed if you think about it as a team sport. And um, when we took office three years ago, there were just under 1,600 families living in about 50 hotels and motels and a variety of shelters around the Commonwealth. And we wanted to work with others to do something about that because we thought that was a, a human tragedy. There's now one open hotel serving families here in Massachusetts, and there are about 30 families in hotels or motels, in that one hotel or motel. So 49 of those hotels and motels are no longer operating, and we've taken that number from almost 1,600 down to about 30. Now that didn't happen, that didn't happen by accident. That was a team effort. It was a team effort working with organizations like Brookview. It was a team effort working with folks like Sheila and the, and the mayor of the city of Boston. And it was a team effort working with so many of our colleagues in the Community Development Corporation business, in the public housing arena, and in local level, and in state government across the Commonwealth to make that happen. And the thing that's most important to me about that is it means the people who used to be literally a family in a one-room uh, hotel or motel room with 
maybe, maybe uh, access to a hot plate, no public play space, and not really located near much of anything, away from the schools the kids went to, uh, the neighborhoods they were familiar with, the neighborhoods that their parents were familiar with. For the most part, we've been able to figure out a way to either help people avoid becoming homeless in the first place, um, again, working with our colleagues in the legislature, our colleagues in local government, our colleagues in the housing community, or to help the folks who were in those hotels and motels find a way back to the communities uh, that were supportive of them and able to help them uh, transition. And, uh, and this program is a classic example of that, which is why um, the Department of Housing and Community Development put $2 million into this project. You have been a tremendous success in terms of your ability to help people avoid becoming homeless once they become part of your world and part of your programs. Um, we're honored to be part of this project. I said when I got here that it looks to me like you already broke most of the ground. I'm not really sure we can do much to add to that. But we do want to say how much uh, we appreciate the effort and the work that's done by so many people to make these kinds of projects happen. And the big benefit, the big benefit over time if you stay with this and continue to pursue it and are determined in your efforts, is you can reduce, even in a very tough market when it comes to the price of housing, the cost of housing, and the availability of housing, the use of homeless hotels and motels for homeless families from a preposterously high number down to a very small number, and at the same time, come up with better answers and better solutions for people than that. Um, and with that, I want to turn the mic over to um, Representative Russell Holmes. I've known uh, Representative Holmes for many years. Um, he is a passionate advocate uh, for his community and for the issues he cares about. But the other thing you should all know about Russell, and I appreciate this, um, this is not a guy who simply talks about problems. This is somebody who usually comes prepared to talk about solutions. Uh, and he is a welcome voice in any conversation I've ever been involved with in public life. Representative Holmes. Thank you, Governor. I um, appreciate all the folks who are from the community, so I wanted to begin with that part of the conversation that what I've been thankful for, for Deb and Mercedes, for the conversations we've had. We don't always land in a place that we all agree, but we land where we've had a conversation. And I've been thankful that you have been open to all the conversations with the neighbors. We've been having this conversation for years, and certainly the conversation doesn't end today uh, just because we have groundbreaking. It is certainly our intent with the community folks uh, who you see outside the gates or hopefully also inside the gates that not only are you going to be a uh, developer today, but you're going to be a good neighbor as you've been a good neighbor around the corner for years. So often folks talk about why do we want to do these in our communities. We want to do them in our communities because this is where we want folks to stay. To, to the mayor and the governor's point around community uh, involvement, you know, folks say these are challenging times for, for challenging reasons. These are challenged families. And so these challenged families, if you think about where we're standing, we're standing in Ward 14. For those who don't know where you're standing or where you are, Ward 14 has the largest amount of communities of colors in this ward in the, in the state. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 98.5% of the people in this, in this ward is a color. And so when you hear uh, the mayor talk about what's happening on the seaport with the cranes, I thank him and his team. When Sheila has a problem right across the street with some of the challenges that we're having around not only just having rental units, but also having ownership, the mayor, Sheila, and her team stepped up to make sure that of those 41 units that we're about to build, 20 of them are home ownership and not just simply having it so that we're going to have just rentals. And we thank you for that, Sheila. I can tell you when Brian uh, took over the BRA and then BPDA, one of the challenges I said to Brian is, you can't skip Dorchester Mattapan. We can't just continue this habit so that we see nothing but cranes downtown and no development here. And so the governor with Jay Ash and, and Crystal and, and Kate have been committed to saying, yes, this old state hospital site must be a place where we're going to be vibrant, where we're going to have it so that it begins to be an engine. And I really thank all the folks. I see Mary Burks in the back from the CAC as we met even on yesterday with the commissioner of DCAM to say again, what does that look like as we continue to build out for the last 14 acres? And so all developers, uh, you're here today in a community, as I said, that is uh, passionate as you see today. And we're passionate because of the fact that we believe that we don't want just a handout, we want a hand up. 
And so when we look at opportunities like this, you're going to say this is a very small project. I know you're going to say that. This is only 12 units. It's very small. We can't have very much involvement uh, from the people in the neighborhood. I can tell you I'm going to get phone calls, which means you're going to get phone calls. If all I see or all they see are license plates from New Hampshire parked out here on this project, we got it already. You're going to get phone calls. As I said, this district is 98% of color. If you think you've hit a great number, I said this to the governor the other day and didn't know I was going to have to say it again today, but if you think you hit a number and you said, hey, we've done great for people of color and we're at 20%, Remind yourself that that means still eight out of 10 folks are not of color, and this is a district that is sitting with 98% of color who want to say we want to see us on the site. We want to see us making sure that we're part of the economic team. So thank you for coming. I uh, can tell you across the street, I get numbers from those teams, whether it be Kurt Site, whether it be Rappaport, whether it be Cruz, that simply says, what are the participation numbers? I would like to have those numbers because of the fact that then I can go brag on people. I can go and brag and say, hey, on this project, there was 85% participation. And on this project, there was 65% participation. And so Deb, Mercedes, and others in the team did not select you to say, yes, you're just gonna bring your own team, but we're gonna want you to be creative. Uh, even if you need help, whether that be, you need help find people who can do floors or who can do uh, the cleaning, construction, cleaning, things of that nature. I have the list. You, uh, MMCA meets right around the corner. And finally, I say I live around the corner. Literally, you can go down to my house, you'll be in my house. You can walk there faster than you can probably drive. But rest assured, I, I now make sure I drive the projects myself so that people don't call me and ask me, have you seen what's happening on the site? I want to see it before they call me so I can make sure I understand it. So when you see me drive by, just please know that that's, that shouldn't be an un, unusual thing for you while, you while you're building, but I'm gonna to wanna to make sure this uh, goes off the way we anticipate. I too wanna to thank the captain. I know he's gonna be thanked more than often uh, once today, but his team has been absolutely outstanding as always. I wanna thank the, the mayor for understanding that diversity is important and having truly the first black Muslim uh, captain in, in the city, in the blackest district in the city is an important message that it sends and uh, I want to thank you for that as well, Mayor. So I want to now just introduce a very good friend of mine who is the chair of homelessness, with her goal being that she wants to end homelessness uh, here in the city, uh, Council Nisa Sabajaj. Thank you, uh, Alderman Cruz. Thank you um, all for being here, and certainly thank you to Zab and Mercedes for all the work that they do to make sure that the Brookview House is not just a home, that it is a place where families find hope and uh, certainly find community. As uh, chair of the Committee on Homelessness, Mental Health and Recovery, one of my greatest focuses, focus has been on our families who are experiencing homelessness, in particular our students in the Boston Public Schools. We have 4,000 students, that's 7% of our student population that is experiencing homelessness. And with the, not just the housing that Brookview creates, but the support and the extra added love and care and attention and again hope that I said before that Brookview brings to those families but brings to those kids is really a, a tremendous um, impact that they have on our city at large and, and certainly our kids that are in our schools and in our neighborhoods and that although this is a very small project um, of just a handful of, of units the impact is greater uh, than any one of us can and really measure and the impact that it has on those students, those kids, their day-to-day -day lives, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom and in the community is tremendous. So on behalf of the Boston City Council, uh, Deb, I thank you for this work and I cheer for the Brookview House uh, from City Hall and, and really excited about this work ahead. Thank you. I want to thank you all for your kind words and for being here today. This is special for us, really special. And next I want to introduce a long, long term participant at Brookview House who is going to sing a song for us. She is our executive assistant at Brookview, but Essentially, she's the person who tells the rest of us what to do. <laughs> this is Angela Beer. Thank you all for coming. Um, Brookview is special to me. Not only am I the executive assistant, but I am a former resident of Brookview House, so I'm the client that never left. And I thank you all so much for your support 
and it really means a lot to families coming into Brookview House who don't know what their next step is, but they have an awesome place and, and, a, and I work with an awesome staff who love each and every one of those women. So I'm gonna try to sing this for you and move out your way. <laughs> when I think of home, I think of a place where there's love overflowing. I wish I was home. I wish I was back there to the things I've been knowing. When that makes the tall grass bend into leaning, suddenly the raindrops that fall have a meaning. Sprinkling the scene makes it all clean. Maybe there's a chance for me to go back. Now that I have some direction, it sure would be nice to be back at home where there's love and affection. And maybe I can convince time to slow up, giving me enough time woo, in my life to grow up. Time be my friend. Let me start again. Suddenly my world has gone and changed its fate, but I still know where I'm going. I have had my mind spun around in space, yet I've watched it growing. So if you're listening, God, please don't make it hard for us to believe the things that we see. Tell us, should we try and stay? Should we run away? Or would it be better just to let things be? Cause living here in this brand new world might be a fantasy. But it's taught me to love. So it's real, it's so real to me. And I've learned that we must look inside. Thank you, and that's what this is about. This is about home. It's about providing folks with a place where they can lay their head, they can cook a meal, they can raise their children, and they can make this community a better place to live. So this is about all of us, because this isn't just for Brookview, this isn't just for the families we serve, this is about the community as a whole. This is for all of us. And like we said, we have services for the community on site in this building and in our building on the next block. So this is about us. And next, I want to introduce the folks who've been there for 25 years, Ms. Pam Feingold from Eastern Bank. It was 25 years ago. I remember it. <laughs> Deborah and the women of Brookview House walked into my office. They had an idea. It took me about 20 minutes to get on board with their idea that moving women and their children out of motel rooms and into a caring, supportive, and nurturing community would be good for women, good for the children, and good for the community. It may have taken others a little bit longer to get on board, but look at us now, Brookview 3. Deborah, the women of Brookview House, you are our heroes. On behalf of Eastern Bank, and especially Pat Capalbo, who's the backbone of our lending team, we are proud to be your teammates, we're proud to be your partners, but mostly we are proud to be your friend. Thank you, and congratulations.
Next, I want to introduce Roger Herzog from CDAC, which is a Community Economic Development Assistance Corporation. What is left to say? Um, well, I will think of something. Congratulations to the board and staff of Brookview House on reaching this milestone of a groundbreaking for the new Brookview House 3. For young families, two of the most critical needs are affordable housing and early education. For CDAC, these are two key building blocks of healthy community development, and they align with our mission and that of our affiliate, Children's Investment Fund. Quite simply, we provide technical and financial assistance to nonprofit organizations who are developing affordable housing or early education facilities across the Commonwealth. To have both housing and out of school time space co-located in one new project is an innovative approach to help these families get an important start in building their lives. Brookview is continuing this model from its prior project nearby. And within the last week, CDAC and the Children's Investment Fund have helped celebrate a groundbreaking at another co-located housing early ed project in New Bedford by the YWCA Southeastern Mass. The parallels between these two projects are important and highlight the way that the Commonwealth and Governor Baker's administration provide funding to get these projects built. I would like to thank Governor Baker and his administration for approving the capital funding for these programs. I'd like to thank new Undersecretary for Housing and incoming CDAC board chair, Janelle Chan and her great staff at DHCD, and Commissioner Tom Weber and his team at EEC. CDAC and the Children's Investment Fund work with our colleagues at DHCD and EEC on underwriting and closing multiple sources of state capital funding, including, as the governor mentioned, over $2 million in support of housing funds and a $450,000 capital grant from the Early Education and Out of School Time Fund, or as we call it, EEOST, which is the newest bond bill program having been established in the 2013 housing bond bill and up for reauthorization in the current bond bill. Thanks to Representative Holmes and the legislature for its support of these programs that will make Brookview House 3 a reality. Congratulations to Mayor Walsh and his great colleagues at the City of Boston and our other funding partners at Eastern Bank. CDAC wore one other hat in this project, and that is of early stage funder. We became involved, and thank you, Deborah, for mentioning Bronya's work, which started with you on this site in 2008. Um, and we provided about a half a million dollars of early stage financing to make this a reality. I want to give a shout out to the CDAC and Children's Investment Fund staff, Teresa Jordan, who's our Director of Children's Facility Finance. Great job, Teresa. And our Senior Project Managers for Child Care, Bree Horowitz, and for Housing, Bronya Clifton. You know, we teach our children that good things take hard work, and hard work takes a long time. But it's all worth it. We are really looking forward to seeing Brookview House 3 become a reality. Congratulations. So next we have, first I want to say, nevertheless, she persisted. That's what we did. So next we have the groundbreaking. So let's get in the ground, dig some dirt, soil. Three, two, three. 